Hey, what's up, everybody? BDF44 coming at you with another video. All right, so what do we have going on? Unfortunately, bad news with Jared Vanderbilt's injury. Even though the uh, results did come back negative, it's still negative for us for sure because he's going to be out for multiple weeks with further evaluation to see if he's out for even longer than that. Which means you ain't going to see him till probably in March or some crazy stuff like that. Honestly, you probably ain't gonna see him for another two months because he's just recovering from a uh, from a, a, a heel that had him out forever. He's not exactly a quick healer, so now we got to deal with this. He was playing extremely well over the last four games. We just got him back to a hundred percent. I'm irritated with his availability, man. I am. I'm irritated with his availability, but uh, love the player. But it, he's throwing his body around a lot, and he's not really built to uh, withstand a whole lot of injury, it seems. So that's the only problem when you have these daredevil type dudes. They got to be built a certain way to be able to sustain their own style of play. And he, he seems like he might not be one of the ones who is. Um, highly valuable, but if you're only going to get him 20 games a season, it's sort of like Robert Williams. It's like, you know, when you're out there, you're amazing. And no one can do what you do. But when you will you be out there is the question. So now... I'm afraid we're starting to go down that path with Jared Vanderbilt. Uh, this is not what we need, and we're trying to assess what we got going on because the whole point is to try to figure out if we can win. Can we win? And if not, uh, then are we are we betraying our timeline by going forward with 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 what we have, or do we need to to start the process of a retool rebuild situation? And that's what everybody's trying to assess right now, which is why I have a headache for the Lakers organization. Uh, having to deal with this injury does not help with what it is you got in front of you uh, at all. Not to say that you were looking to trade him because I don't think you're actually eligible to do so yet. But now you got to take into account, can you sustain this particular season without Jared Vanderbilt? The answer is hell no. You could barely f function without Jared Vanderbilt next to Austin and D'Lo. You need that piece in place. Cam Reddish is still out. No telling how long he'll be out. Um, you needed those two to keep those. You needed him to keep those two in a position to look their best. So now we're back to square one. Yes, we look good against the Celtics, but ain't nobody going to take it. Celtics took us completely for granted. They didn't think we were coming in to play at all. And we caught them in the mouth. So I think that is an anomaly. I don't think that's what you can count on going forward. Uh, as it pertains to everybody playing that well and all that, it's not, it's not what I expect. Uh, Vanderbilt is a huge part of why all that made sense any damn way. So his jump shot just started falling. We had him make a couple threes yesterday. I mean, God, man, it's the worst time for him to go down when he's basically 100% healthy. Uh, terrible. I feel bad for him. I feel bad for us. <laughs> I sound like a selfish prick, but that is exactly what comes to mind. I'm just really trying to assess our front our franchise and situation right now and with the videos that I've been making you already know where I stand and my whole point is if we can't win now then what are we doing you know what what it was really what's really there for us to do so no JV man Vando's out for God knows probably another month and a half two months man maybe even the season depending on what they find so uh yeah yeah that 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 is what it is man um I don't know if Darvin bought himself some time or not with the Celtics game as far as whether or not people want him fired. I'm pretty sure everybody who's on the board getting him fired is ready to get him gone. But as far as whether or not that game had any positive or negative impact on him, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I think on its surface the answer is no. But I think there's, a, there's an argument to be said for we had all this on our bench and you didn't even use them. How come we couldn't get nothing out of Jackson A's till now? How come, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, and, and Torian Prince was on the floor to be the worst plus minus but only missed like nine minutes of the basketball game. Yeah, I still want to fire Darvin. Yeah, man, I do. I do. I want to fire But nevertheless, that's a whole other story. At any rate, uh, no Vando, man. So we got to keep going forward. Trying to get the most out of our team, regardless if the stars are going to play. You know, seems like they're on, they're on the protest mission, as far as I could tell. And that's okay, man. But our team won without them, so 
they're going to have to come back and, and kind of tuck their tails in between their legs in regards to that. I know they weren't counting on that. Nobody was. Uh, but it is what it is, man. We beat them, so we beat the Celtics, the best team in basketball, without our two best players while they were sitting out hoping we would fail, I think, <laughs> so that they could further their, their in, intentions. And I just think that that could have further split the locker room, to be honest with you. It could have made it worse. But it is what it is, man. I don't know what the Lakers are going to do as far as trades are concerned. It seems like the number one trade option right now is to trade Braun somewhere, to be honest. That's the only thing I'm hearing in the news. And, uh, of course, that's the only thing we've been talking about. But is that real? Is that smoke? I don't know. I honestly don't know. But uh, we'll figure it out. I think the most important thing right now is just um, – regrouping and retooling to figure out how we can have our rotation be as positive as possible hopefully we can continue to get us what we get what we're getting out of jackson hayes because uh, if we can maybe he can offset some of what is missing with vanderbilt just like he did in the second half of the game so i don't know if that's something we can count on or not but i'm hopeful i'm hopeful jackson hayes has turned a corner and is now starting to show people that he can play some and i hope that um so yeah, man, we'll see, man. I think something big could be coming, though. A trade of some sort, whether it be us or somebody else who's going to make a move uh, with so much shaking around in terms of price tags on things starting to become understood. And the Lakers inquire about moving LeBron James. Now you know how much such and such is going to cost. That information can get to another GM move. That's what such and such costs, and you see another move is made. That kind of thing is really big, uh, really possible right now. Uh, there was a trade uh, yesterday between the Rockets and the Memphis Grizzlies that sent uh, Victor Oladipo to the Rockets and sent, uh, no, Victor Oladipo to the Grizzlies, which is nothing. Uh, three picks as well, three second rounders, and then sent Steven Adams to the Rockets. Um, Steven Adams to the Rockets could be interesting when he gets back, but I think he's out for the season, so I don't know if he ever actually plays for the Rockets. That is a bad contract. I'm sure Memphis is happy to get off of. Not only that, but they got some draft equity, so they actually fleece the Rockets when you really consider it, but I'm not surprised by that because the Rockets keep doing stuff that don't make no damn sense, like putting a bunch of vets in front of a bunch of superstar kids. But whatever the case may be, man, the Rockets got fleeced. They ended up giving up three picks when they should actually be getting three picks back for Steven Adams' injury. Um... Coupled with the with the fullness of that contract, which is just just horror, it's horrible. So yeah, man, that is what happened there. Rockets got fleeced for three second rounders and ended up taking salary of somebody they may not even be able to use. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. And uh, shout out to Memphis. Keep on finding good stuff, man. Uh, the, uh, Scotty Pippen, they got off that Adams contract now. Um, of course, they found uh, Vance Williams, who's balling, and they got him on a contract that's just. Dirt cheap for the type of production that he's been showing over the last two weeks. Absolute dirt cheap. And, uh, you know, it's one, it's one of the situations where the Memphis Grizzlies are retooling very nicely while Jaws out. I don't know if people pay attention to what they're doing. Uh, I don't like the fact that they let Kenny Lofton walk, but everything else they did after that seems to be pretty sound. Uh, so I, I just think they're making the small, subtle moves that you want to see. But uh, as for us, I don't know what the hell we doing, but I know we got a lot to consider, and I hope we got – uh, I think it caps on because Vando going down going to make things more difficult for us. So that's pretty much the thought, man. Just wanted to come here and give you all an update on that. Hopefully something else will come up and we'll have something to talk about. Video 44, thank you all for watching. Wow.